Hi everyone and welcome to Valley Crafty Corner. I have a layout to uh, share with you today and it's doing a 12 by 12 layout using the November Studio Calico kit called Sock Hop. And I also got the Poodle, Poodle Skirt add-on. Um, right now I'm taking that blue background paper and I'm misting it with the Studio Calico white. And I wasn't 100% sure where I was putting my layout, so um, I just kind of spritzed in um, white ink as well as uh, dropping um, some droplets all over the page. And that's using the Mr. Huey's uh, white. And here I'm taking a photo, and this is a 5x7 photo, and normally I do 4x6, uh, but or actually I think this one is a 4x6. I printed it out on uh, my desktop printer and it was quite a while ago um, so I'm not 100% sure what the sizing is. Um, I know it looks bigger than a normal 4x6 but I don't think it's quite a 5x7 anyway. So here I'm just kind of laying down um, my pieces of paper that I want to use for my layering. Um, I use that dark blue uh, Lucille paper. Um, it's from the Lucille collection from Basic Gray, sorry. And here I'm taking um, some of that blue pattern paper and just layering it on the back side. And I didn't want to use the whole thing so that's why I was cutting the strips of the paper off. And I also used uh, the Studio Calico exclusive paper and it's that um, craft kind of tanny looking paper on the background and it, it looks similar to the PB&J collection um, so that's what I used for my layers and of course I always um, ink up my edges using the black soot ink from Tim Holtz And here I'm just layering everything down on that brown cardstock. I didn't usually I start off with my background and then just kind of add layers underneath, but this time I wanted to start with my picture and add the layers as I went. Um, that uh, piece of paper in the background there is um, it. I'm not sure where which collection it's from. I think it might be a Studio Calico exclusive. Um, and it kind of had the uh, tan and white checkerboard pattern on the back side. Um, so that is the background or the back side of it. And I wasn't really overly liking that paper or that well uh, when I, we first got that collection and it was the first glance to look at it. But... Um, when I was putting this layout together, I was looking for colors and not so much patterns. Um, so that pattern reminded me of uh, kind of like a snowy background. So that's why I chose that. And here I'm just layering everything down. Sorry, I just had to let my dog out because she was uh, whimpering at the door. I think somebody's here. So now that I have everything laid down, um, that's pretty much how the setup for this layout is going to be. And I took some of that vellum washi tape um, and just laid it across the whole layout. Um, the layout needed something to ground everything down to. Otherwise, it felt like everything was kind of floating in the air. Uh, so I just, I didn't use the whole strip. I didn't want to. So I just kind of, you know, uh, ripped off pieces just to make it fit underneath the photo. So that's what I did there. And here I was mucking around with some of that other vellum tape. And I ripped this piece off. And I figured um, rather than sticking it onto the sheet, I was going to use it. And it, you can't really tell, but it's got numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and, and such on it. So I just thought I'd layer it beside the photo. And it felt to me like it was still kind of floating a little bit. It needed something a little bit more. 
So I took the back side of that uh, kind of floral print paper and it's that um, kind of like tan and white check and I added it in uh, the top right corner um, just to add a little bit and I was going to add it in the bottom left corner but it just felt a little off so I didn't put it in there. Uh, I just felt it was too much. So I just added in that top right corner and I really like how that look is. It kind of looks like a really giant photo corner. So it does kind of draw your up, eye up into um, that corner. So here I'm going through the die cut pieces to kind of get a feel for you know what I wanted to add into uh, for just dimensional pieces. This is typically how I do layouts. Is typically what I do is I get my photo matted and I get my basic uh, paper layout um, going and then I start to add uh, my embellishments in and then I get to the point where it's getting to be filled up pretty fast. So then I add my title in and then I add my journaling in. And then I take a second look at it to see if there's anything else that needs to be added in. And then that's how I finish my layout off. Um, so I get the, the basic general idea of, of how I want the layout and then just carry on from there. So... That's what I'm doing right now is now that I've, I've matted my photo, I have the general feel for where I want the layout to go. Now I start looking through my die cuts and I've, at this point I'm looking at um, colors, uh, wording, um, you know, certain things that, you know, I think will accent the photo quite well. Um, so here is where I start playing with the embellishments. Um, I have that remember tag and to me if you're going to put a tag on a photo you need to add twine to it or some sort of string element to it. Um, if you, I mean I've seen lots of layouts with um, just the plain tags but to me tags need string just to emphasize that it is a tag and here what I'm doing is I'm just adding some uh, Baker's twine that I got from a studio calico kit quite a while ago and typically I use my close to my heart twine um, it's it's stretched a really long way I've had that twine for a long time but because this twine uh, from studio calico like a past kit I've had for quite a while I wanted to use that up that way um, I wouldn't find it in my stash later on um, I could just continue on using um, the close to my heart one uh, and here what I'm doing is I'm taking the same twine and I'm wrapping it around that die cut piece and that die cut piece is from the fifth and frolic collection and um, it's just the die cut pieces so um, it just needed a little bit more um, dimension to it so I added some more twine and just tied it in a plain knot and um, here I had one of those heart pieces that I had when I tried to do it in the other layout, but um, I put it on and I kind of liked it, but it wasn't where I wanted to go. So I don't end up sticking that little heart piece on. And um, I am, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm taking some more washi tape and this is from that other package and um, layering right across the photo. And it's kind of a, a pinky kind of color because that tag that's in that top left corner or sorry top right corner right now it has pink embellishment or pink dots on it as well as blue so that brings the blue in and it has yellow as well but I didn't want to go too much into the yellow at this point I just didn't think that would give it a wintry feel so um, pink and blue are not typical um, uh, wintry colors, but I really like them as um, 
as a wintry feel, it gives it a little bit of a fresher feel than the typical white and blue or um, I'm not sure what other kind of wintry colors are in there, but uh, it does give it a, a lighter feel to it. So this is at the point where I kind of start to run with uh, my title and you'll see me fuss quite a bit here with my title. I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted my title to be. Um, and then I kind of had messed around with a few titles before uh, when I was looking at this picture and I came up with the title bundled up because they're all in this little toboggan sled that you pull behind your snow machine and I mean I don't think there was any room for anything else in there uh, they were all bundled up in their snow suits they had scarves and mitts on they had a sleeping bag over top so I mean I don't think they could have been bundled up any more than what they were so um, so I kind of went with that title bundled up and here you can kind of see me messing with the placement of the words. And I was kind of happy with that at that point, but I don't end up keeping it that way. It just felt like the title was floating a little bit too far away from the photo. Um, so I don't end up putting it there if I remember right. Um, so here I'm just taking some more of those die cut pieces and just starting to layer them on and around the photos. And basically what I'm doing is just matting um, in the two uh, corners. So in the top left, or sorry, the top right and the bottom left is where I am putting um, my embellishments just to draw your eye in towards the photo. So I found another die cut piece that was similar uh, to that little tag in the top left or sorry top right corner. So I wanted to use that um, to balance the photo off. So um, that kind of helped and so I started to commit to putting everything down on the photo now. and. I just inking up all these die cut pieces with the black soot ink. Mm, sorry guys, I had to have a sip of water. My throat was getting a little dry. Oh, but here um, I'm just taking some more of those die cuts and inking them up. And that little circle piece there that you saw me inking up, it says so cool on it. So I kind of thought that had a cute little twist to um, the pictures on there. And that longer piece says insta moment. So um, I thought that was pretty cute. And I had to lift that, that insta moment piece off and just scoot it over just a little bit just because if I left it where it was, you wouldn't be able to read what it had said. Um, the tag would have been covering it up. So I just had to scoot it over a little bit. And it doesn't, um, you know, cover anything up in the photo. So it doesn't really matter. And it felt like that bottom uh, left corner was lacking. Um, something so I took another one of those die cut pieces and this is an oval one and I'm kind of off camera here a little bit and I have to apologize but um, I was just trying to mon monkey around and see if there was anything else that I could add in that uh, bottom corner there so here I'm taking that um, these are snowflakes, mistable snowflakes from Studio Calico. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting them out of the plastic and leaving the backer sheet on them. Um, this way I can mist them and I don't have to worry about them losing their stickiness when I mist them. 
um, cause that's happened to me a couple times and it's really frustrating. So if I leave them on the backer sheet, I can ink them up or do whatever I need to on them and they still stay sticky. So, um, you'll see that in a second here. And what I did is I took that oval tag and I tucked it underneath the photo and then I put the tag over top. You could still see, um, the wording underneath, uh, that uh, tag and it just says where the photo was taken in the year. I didn't do any journaling on this particular layout. Um, I've done a couple um, with this uh, particular group of photos taken from this day. Um, so I was going to use this as kind of as my title page for the layout. Um, and I've, I've done journaling on those pieces, so I didn't feel like I needed to on these ones. And here I'm just messing around with that title again, and I'm still not satisfied with where I wanted. The title just felt like it was too far away. Um, in that particular spot, but it felt like it was getting lost if I put it a little closer. So, um, I just left it there for now, but it doesn't, that's not what happens. And I tried moving it down below the photo to see if that would work, and um, it doesn't. So, um, I just kept monkeying around with it, and it was really kind of frustrating um, that it it didn't sit well. So here I'm taking some um, ink from uh, Lindsay Stamp Gang, and I'm not sure what the name of that spritz is, but it matches the um, background paper. Uh, I just wanted to bring a little bit more of that blue in. Um, so here I'm just taking a rag and just down, uh, splotching or like um, um, pressing on it so that I get rid of that excess ink. Because I am very impatient and I like to use my stuff right away. So if I can, you know, kind of make things go along a little faster, it's way better for me. So here I'm just kind of looking at um, that sticker book and um, the fabric stickers from Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic to see if there's any stickers that I can use on this layout. And there really wasn't because... Um, the sticker book and uh, the fabric stickers are a little bit on the feminine side and I didn't want it and they're kind of like on the springy feminine side so I didn't want to take it in that direction so I just kind of didn't use them at all and here I'm monkeying back around with um, the title again and I tried using the like the darker letters like the dark blue letters in, in as to say bundled and then I was going to have it say up and in the these glitter stickers and just wasn't going to happen so here I'm just going to um, spell the title out bundled up with these um, glittered stickers to see if that's a better fit and it is so um I just ended up using all of them in that particular, I don't know if you want to call them thickers or, or alphabet, but anyway, um, I ended up using that. It made it have a more wintry feel with the kind of silver look to those letters. And I know it's really hard to see on camera what the, like, like what the letters look like. But it does suit the layout quite a bit better now than the dark blue. And you can see it a little bit better on that washi tape there. So here I'm attaching those snowflakes down and because I used dimensional adhesive on those tag on the tag and then that 
uh, ticket piece up in the top right corner. I could tuck the snowflakes underneath it. Um, and I really like how that looks. And here I'm just taking uh, these pink enamel dots uh, from the My Sweetest Things from My Mind's Eye. And I'm just adding them to the tag. And then you'll see me add one to that top snowflake. And I had put a little one down at first, but I needed a bigger one. So I just peeled that off and I just put a bigger one on. Um, it just looked a little better. The other, the smaller one looked a little off. And I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, here I'm uh, pulling out that stamp set again. Um, and I'm coming in with some white close to my heart ink. Um, this is a pigment ink and all white inks are pigment based because they need to um, have a little bit more so that they can adhere to it. So a dye ink, a pigment ink is a opaque ink whereas a dye ink is a translucent ink. So in order for the white to show up, it has to be pigment based, if that makes sense. So I just stamped in the top left corner and the bottom right corner um, just to kind of frame the photo. And here I took the leftover of that pink washi tape and I'm adding it underneath um, that layer, those layers that I had um, in the top right corner of that picture. Um, it just needed to pull some more of that pink in. So here we're going to take some close-ups of the layout. And there we are. So there's the bottom right corner and you can see that bundled up just fits the photo quite a bit better. So thanks for watching and I hope everybody has a great day. Bye.